Hi folks, let's show how we can both tap and thread mill in Fusion 360. Welcome to another Fusion Friday. So we've got a part modeled up here. In this first hole, we're going to tap. So I've already got my 201 drill drilled out because 201 is a number seven drill. That's your pre-drill for tapping. And to tap it, we'll go to drilling and I'm going to pick my tap, which is just a number, let's see here, change the filter to tap. Should be number 51. And if we edit that tool and take a look, you'll see I've got it set up as a right hand tap. And the most important thing, even more important than the diameter, is this thread pitch. It's a quarter by 20. So if it's 20 TPI, the thread pitch is 1 divided by 20. That gives you your 0.05. Why that's important is when you tap in a CNC mill, you obviously have to slave the uh, or the motion between the Z moving down and the spindle turning has to be set. The way we do that in the Tormach, because we can't fully rigid tap, is we use a tension compression head. So it has to be really close, but the fact that this thing can slide in and out a little means the motion doesn't have to be perfectly um, synced between the two. It actually works quite well. We're doing a through hole, so anytime I've got a through hole, I would much rather use what's called a spiral uh, point tap. They're a little bit stronger than spiral flute taps, and they, they're great because they push that chip ahead, so that chip isn't going to come back through the flutes of your uh, tap, and anytime you're avoiding that, you're going to just improve the cut quality of that tapped hole. I'm going to run it at uh, 400 RPMs, and I happen to know 400 RPMs, if it's a 0.5 or 0.05, excuse me, uh, pitch, 400 times 0.05 means it'll be 20 inches a minute. You'll see that in a second. So, geometry, I'll click my hole, heights, hole bottom. We'll go a little bit past because remember, your taps don't always, um, you know, complete a full tap until say a quarter inch into it. So we'll go drill tip, or we'll say just here negative 0.25 and cycle is on tapping. I'm not even going to put a dwell in. Thread milling. A lot of folks seem to think you can't do thread milling in Fusion 360 yet because they don't support form tools. I am excited for when they will support form tools, but it doesn't matter. Here's a thread mill. Um, this is a multi-flute thread mill. You can also buy single flutes, which are awesome because with these you can cut any pitch, thread, ID or OD, uh, subject of course to the limitations of the physical size of this thing if it can't fit in a small hole of course, or the root of the thread is too big for the size of your tooth. But the great thing about these is we only really got to go around once. When you buy a thread mill, this is Beauties from Lakeshore Carbide, it has the tool diameter on the little box, 0.18 inches. So I'm going to just go ahead and create uh, 2D thread tool We'll do a new tool, and I'm just going to put it in as a, um, as a flat end mill. We know it's inches, let's see how many teeth is this thing, three, and it's 0.18, and that's all that I need for speeds and feeds. 0.18, um, we'll take a one thou uh, cut per tooth, three inches, 2,500 or so. There's my cut recipe, simple enough. It's going to be tool 101, what do we say, 2,500 at 7.5, click OK, click OK, geometry, pick my hole, and the important thing here, very important, will be thread pitch here. Again, 1 divided by 20 is going to give me the 0.05 that is very much matters. Now a couple things. You'll notice this hole is modeled in CAD as a 0.201. It doesn't matter what it's actually modeled at so much as uh, I'm drilling it with a number seven drill. This hole I want to model as my OD major thread diameter which is 0.25 inches. If we switch over to like a, a wireframe view here, you'll see it's thread milling all the way down. We don't need to do that because this has got all these teeth. And again, we don't have a four mil and we can't set this up and it doesn't even appear that they, um, I don't think, 
um, support showing how long the tool shank is, uh, tool flutes are to calculate this, but let's just do it with the heights. So I'm just going to have it, I'm going to actually have it go a little bit through. We look at our workpiece, we can be okay. So I'm going to have the bottom height be whole bottom minus 0 0.05. I'm going to have the top height be whole bottom plus 0 0.05 or something. And if we click OK, now you can see it's only doing one, two, just a hair more than two rotations. Frankly, still more than enough. And then the last thing, and this is not meant to be an advanced tutorial on thread milling, but you want to do it in multiple depths of cut. And every time you increase the cut diameter, you're disproportionately increasing the engagement of these teeth. So it's actually a much heavier cut, if that makes sense. We don't have the ability to do that here. Um, these are just going to be even uh, depth of cut, or width of cut rather, passes. But again, as you come in, you're engaging a lot more of that. So a lot of times, a better way to do it is similar to on a lathe where you take proportionately smaller steps in. Um, but the beauty of thread milling is uh, there's so many things that are awesome about it. The one downside is the thread mills are expensive, but boy, they can create better threads with fewer burrs. You can control the um, you can control the engagement and the fit of it. And if you do break one, unlike a tap, these will just fall out through the hole. You can thread also right up to the bottom of a blind hole, far more so than you can do even with rigid tapping. So we'll say four step overs of 0.01. And now you can see we get these little things. The last thing I really recommend that I like to do because these tools are expensive is I always check uh, lead to center. That way I know that that tool is always coming in the middle because there's a little high pucker factor when this thing ramps into that hole. Click OK. Let's go cut some threads. Pucker factor incredibly high. Camera's rolling, take a look. So we know the tap hole is gonna work, obviously. And there's nothing wrong with this fit, but take a look. See how I can move the, the fastener here? Let's try the uh, thread milled hole. Might be too tight. Uh, nope, oh, look at that. Look at that, folks. A little bit snug at the bottom. I mean, I'm just using my fingers here. You just can't budge it. Awesome. Both holes are fine, but boy, that thread milled hole, what a great fit. You heard on the third and really fourth pass it, you could hear it taking a heavier cut. So again, hopefully the folks at Fusion will come out with a way to do incremental width of cut. Nothing wrong with the tapped hole, but 
you can see a little bit of slop to it. Hope you enjoyed. See you next Friday.